Hey guys, and welcome back. Last time, I made this Mandalorian helmet. So today, we're going to be making the Mandalorian's armor. So many of you called last time that when I made this Mandalorian helmet, I would be continuing with a full Mandalorian cosplay series. And that's something I have wanted to do for a long time, like since the show first started. So I am so excited to finally be making it. But today we are going to be making some of his torso armor. I'm talking the chest plate, shoulder pauldrons, uh, even those wrist gauntlets. So let's get started. The first step was to pattern out what I want the chest plate to look like just on a piece of paper first. Now, there's no wrong way to do this. I just looked at the picture and tried to draw out all the different shapes that I could see. Mostly freehand and just matched up to the size of my body, but I kept making more and more alterations until I was happy with it. All right, so I was patterning this for a little while now, and here's what I've got. Obviously, it is only half of the torso because when we go to trace this onto foam, we'll just flip it and then you'll have a symmetrical chest piece. But like that, I think that's not bad. I have some different ideas with some angled cuts and such to give it that dimension to it, but I think we're ready to just go ahead and trace it onto foam. We're going to be using half inch EVA floor mat foam, which is the same material I made this helmet out of, so let's get to it. I traced all my pieces onto the EVA floor mat foam. Make sure, of course, to flip them so that you get both halves, and then I cut them out with a sharp knife. All right, so I'll give a little overview of all the pieces we've got going on here. So there's the top breastplate section, which is symmetrical, and I cut kind of a bevel onto the edge of this piece here, so that when we go to glue it onto this, it'll be kind of raised up a little bit. And then there's a few pieces like these out of the six millimeter foam, as well as the diamond piece in the middle, which has one part cut out of the four millimeter, and then a six millimeter piece on top of it to fill it in. I also have this abdomen section, which is cut out of one flat piece of foam right now, but I cut some angled channels into the back so that when we glue it together, if we glue those closed, it'll kind of fold in an interesting way and look pretty cool. I glued all these together with contact cement, which I already explained in the previous video, so just go watch that because I'm going to try not to repeat myself too much throughout this series. So now that I've got both this piece glued up and this one, I want to attach them on top of each other, something, something like this. And so I cut this piece to fit behind them and kind of act as a connector piece. Wow, I am incredibly pleased with how this thing turned out. I love all the different layers of foam and how it came together. Moving on down the costume now, there's another piece kind of under the abdomen section here that doesn't appear to be metal. It looks like something else, but I think I'm going to make that pretty simply just out of one sheet of the six millimeter foam. I just freehanded a shape and then added some additional lines, most of which I saw in the picture, but there were some that were covered up, so I had to improvise. And then I scored these and opened them up with a heat gun. So this will attach under here somewhere after it's painted, because it's going to be a completely different color. But I think that completes all of our torso armor, so moving on now to the shoulder armor. So Mando has some pretty cool shoulder pauldrons and they kind of make up, along with the helmet, the profile of his armor that you see like in a silhouette is what I'm talking about. So it's really important that you pattern these out to get the right specific shape and that's obviously the first step. 
I started drawing this on an outline of my shoulder and there was actually a decent bit of trial and error messing around with the shape off camera but then I traced it down onto floor mat foam, heat formed them and glued it together. For the raised outline, I cut that part off of the same paper pattern and then traced it onto the 6mm craft foam. And then the ridge down the center of it, which is a great way to hide my seam, I made out of more half inch foam. And these shoulder pauldrons look pretty cool. Now you could say these are done, except in the finale of season one, he gets a signet put onto his right shoulder. His is the head of a mud horn, and to make that, instead of metal weld or anything, I think I'm gonna use hot glue. I just freehanded the shape with a Sharpie on first, and then took the glue gun and followed my lines. It's kind of a weird thing to do with the glue gun that's not gluing two pieces together, but it gives it a really nice look. That mud horn looks really cool, and now these shoulder pads are completed. Moving on. The last thing I want to make in this video are Mando's wrist gauntlet things. He's got the one with the flamethrower and the other with the whistling birds. Now, when I made Boba Fett's costume in the past, I made his gauntlet rocket launcher thing here out of a solo cup, actually, which looks pretty cool, but it has some flaws. It's pretty difficult to get on because I have to fit my whole wrist through it, and the problem is, if it's big enough to fit my fist through it, then it's too loose on the rest of my arm, and if you move around enough, all the weight falls to the bottom. So this time, I want to make something that's tighter on my forearm, and to do that, I'm going to need some kind of mechanism for it to open and close without me having to stick my fist through it. We'll build on it with foam and other materials in the end, but I think I'm going to start with this cardboard poster tube. Uh, it's a pretty decent size, and the first thing I want to do is cut it into sizes for either of the gauntlets, and then cut those in half. You could do this with a knife, just with many cuts, but I think it will go a little bit quicker if we use a hacksaw. I marked some segments. Mine were about 8 inches, just so that they could go from my wrist to a decent bit under the elbow on the forearm there. And then I clamped it to the table when I cut them up. Cutting them in half was a bit more tricky, but I ended up trying to carve at it with a knife and some scissors, and I got them in half. Alright, so these are cut up now, so we are ready to attach them back together, basically. I came across a lot of different ways online that people connected uh, gauntlets, Mandalorian gauntlets, other type of bracers and stuff, and a lot of them used a uh, piano hinge with like the rod that goes through it. I didn't really want to do that, so I think I'm going to try Velcro. But on the other side, a lot of people used a door hinge. So I picked up the smallest door hinge I can find, and we're going to put one on uh, each of these, so hopefully they'll be able to open up like that. I couldn't very well screw the door hinge into the cardboard, so I just super glued it on and then contact cemented a piece of craft foam over the top later. Right, so that's cool. I've got these Velcro bits sticking from the ends of these, like tabs, and then on the outside of this, so I can put it on and then just Strap, strap, and boom! We're gauntleted up. That is pretty cool. Continuing on from this, we have our base now, and I think we are just going to build on top of this with all kinds of foam. First, I wrapped the whole thing with some four millimeter foam. 
But beyond that, I honestly didn't really have a plan going into this. So you can't exactly follow what I'm doing in the time lapse here uh, down to a T if you're going to make this yourself. But I looked at the picture a whole lot and tried to match every single shape that I could see. A lot were foam in different thicknesses that were cut and sanded and glued, but I also utilized pieces from my junk box, which I've just been collecting for a long time. And actually, I used the same junk box when I made the Boba Fett gauntlets. For the flamethrower aspect on the side of the right one, I just cut the top off of some pens and used a marker cap. Okay, so the right gauntlet is done. I've started work on the second one, which has the uh, whistling birds, as they call it. But there's like a tube on the top, and so to use that, uh, I think we're gonna use this random bit of plastic tube that I found in the junk box. And then there's a little um, keypad with some buttons on it. Uh, when I made the Boba Fett one, it also had a similar keypad. Uh, I thought it looked like a Lego piece, and so I actually put that there. And I still think it looks like that, but I can't find another Lego piece that's like this. So I think I'm just gonna rip this off right now and then maybe find another one to replace it. I cut the tube in half with the cutting bit on my rotary tool, and then, you guessed it, added more random foam and junk bits to finish this up. For the front part of the whistling birds, I made a cone out of foam, and then for the little holes that are in it, I just used a little uh, drill bit piece on the front of my rotary tool. All right, these gauntlets are completed. I'm quite happy with how they turned out. And that's everything I'm going to be building for this episode, so let's bring it all out. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And as much as I am kind of digging this dark gray and white color scheme, it looks very uh, imperial to me. But Mando's costume is silver, so we are going to be painting it. This painting follows the exact same technique that I showed on the helmet, which is first hitting it with some black Plasti Dip. After that, a nice coat with Plasti Dip Glossifier. And finally, that wonderful metallic chrome color. I'm back inside from spray painting now. All this armor is dry and looking very shiny. This is like in chapter three where he walks out with that freshly forged armor looking very clean, but throughout the remainder of the show, he gets it pretty dirty and damaged. So we're going to weather this the exact same way that I weathered the helmet to try to match the color, and that was with black shoe polish. Oh, also remember this piece from earlier? Instead of hitting it with the silver, I just used a flat gray paint. This is a pretty simple technique of just covering all of the armor with the shoe polish, but then wiping most of it away with a paper towel, leaving just a bit left to give it a cool look. This helps break up that pristine silver and really brings out some of the details like the mud horn on the shoulder and all of the little pieces on the gauntlets. Just getting a bit of black paint smudged behind them gives them a lot more definition. Some needed more coats in different areas, so just play around with it a little until you get your desired look. I am really happy with how the weathering turned out. I might have gone a little heavier on it than I did before just because I was having fun with all these different pieces, but that's pretty much it. The proper last step is to hit them with a final coat of clear gloss spray paint just to seal all the weathering in and really make them shine. And I'm going to do that in a bit. But first, I need to shoot some pretty shots of this armor and an outro so that I can edit this video and have it done for you guys on time. 
So, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Mandalorian cosplay series. Next time, I will be continuing with some of the leg armor and maybe belts and straps and stuff, just working our way up until we have a completed costume. I'd like to say I can get these videos out for you on a weekly basis, but I don't know. I don't know if I can promise that, so you might have to wait a couple weeks here and there, but I promise they're coming. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you have any questions on this build, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. And follow me on Instagram, at the Costume Kid, for some behind the scenes photos and updates, and maybe some live streams as I'm working on this armor. But as always, subscribe right here for new videos.